As we know by now, the heart of this $12 billion acquisition is patents and the possibility that the already highly competitive mobile phone and tablet industry could morph into a holy war. For more, we bring in one of the nation's top intellectual property lawyers, Jack Barufka, as head of patent practice at Pillsbury Winthrop Shaw. He's with us from Washington this morning. Uh, Jack, is there any precedent for this in the intellectual property world? Uh, a shot like Google has just taken against competitors like Apple, Nokia, Lucent, uh, Alcatel, you name it. Uh, thank you, Eric. Well, this really isn't anything new per se. I mean, we've seen this before in, in various industries. What, what is new really is the size and scope of what we're talking about, the just sheer magnitude of the dollars and the number of patents. Um, but when you find that there's a new entrant, a relatively new entrant into a large marketplace, uh, and they don't have the, the patents to support their market position, well, they're vulnerable. And uh, they really haven't spent the R&D dollars, they haven't invested in the patent portfolio, so uh, competitors are going to take advantage of you at that point. And this is a way for uh, Google to try to uh, at least play in the game. Jack, Google has talked about wanting to defend the Android ecosystem. Does $12.5 billion in that sense effectively buy you a kind of get out of jail free card? Now they can do what they want to do? <laughs> uh, not at all. I mean, uh, just because you have a patent doesn't mean that you have the right to practice anything. What, what it does do is give you the right to sue somebody else uh, as a defensive measure if they come after you. So uh, the patents that they acquired don't necessarily cover anything that they're doing or intend to do, what it does is give them a seat at the table, at the negotiating table, when they're across from whether it's uh, Microsoft or Apple or Oracle or whoever it may be, because up until this point, uh, Google didn't have much of a patent portfolio to speak with, uh, to speak of, and uh, they're just very vulnerable. Hey Jack, it's Dominic here. One of the things that Eric spoke about was this idea that it could be a holy war here, right? This is, this is an arms race for patents. So what's, gonna, what is, what's it going to come down to? Does this really up the ante for everybody else in technology right now? Well, I'm not sure about technology. I think every uh, technical area is different, but certainly in the, uh, uh, in the phone wars, uh, this certainly ups the ante, and I think you can see uh, it, it could be either a, a real bloodbath where these uh, companies go at each other head-to-head -head for years and years, or uh, at some point they may see, well, it's still only a matter of mutually assured destruction, so why don't we settle this in, in, a, in a peaceful way? Well, it's that's hard the key question. How, how Jack, Jack, you've advised many of Google's rivals, and now increasingly from an IP standpoint, Google's rivals, Research in Motion among them. What would you urge these companies to do? Is it in anyone's interests to wage this kind of an arms race, uh, a mutually assured destruction, or should they start talking now about a global settlement of sorts? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, companies like Apple might still think that they have the dominant patent position and, and might not bring uh, them to the table. So uh, I think it's a, real, it's a matter of really digging into the actual patent portfolios, see what they actually cover, see what they're, they're worth, and uh, you have to make a strategic decision on a case-by-case -case basis. There's not just a, a, a one-stop, you know, one solution for all. That kind of puts it into perspective, doesn't it, Jack? It kind of all comes down to what Steve Jobs wants to do. Jack, thank you. Jack Barufka, he's head thank of patent you. practice at Pillsbury Winthrop, one of the nation's top intellectual property lawyers.